What's up, guys? Back again. Me and Hex coming to bring you the action of the Asian region. I don't know why you're laughing, Hex. We're back. What are you? Because <laughs> like, why are you already, laughing? It's me? already 1 a.m. and I get a little slap oh. happy when it gets a little late at night. Overwatch League after dark has been <laughs> fun, and uh, I think we have some good matches tonight. They better be better than last night, at least. Yeah. Well, night, day, whatever I you want to call it. Yeah, well, you, uh, you'd you like to think so. <laughs> you hope so, at least. Chart and Spark not looking so hot as of recently. They did both end up suffering a 0-3 the other day, and uh, hopefully they can bring it back. I'm sure a lot of the fans out there will be hoping for the same. We were talking about, actually, a little bit before this uh, whole thing started. We are sitting in rehearsals, and, yeah, the Numbani push for Spark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the four-minute time bank didn't get a tick on 33%. Felt kind of bad. Yeah, they, they didn't get swept technically because there was that draw. Guangzhou got swept, and, I mean, that was... Look, both these teams got thoroughly trounced. There, there's no other way to put it. Um, Chengdu beat the crap out of Guangzhou. <laughs> Hangzhou versus <laughs> Shanghai was just disappointing in a lot of different aspects. But these two teams are going to face off against each other. Historically, a pretty good matchup. And uh, so I just expect five maps. Both times these teams have played each other this year, they went to five maps. So we could be in for a long first set here. But who we got in the starting lineup there, Jaws? Well, let's have a little look. On the charge side, Eileen Nero, by the way, that's how you say the name. <laughs> Rio, Krong, Neptuno, and Shu. I am very much looking forward to when Hitscan Heroes become, you know, kind of unbanned. Korean Widowmaker coming up big because Happy has been a person that I just wanted to just continue watch on a Hitscan yeah. roll. But still, after today, though, still there is uh, McCree and Widowmaker out of the pool. But after today, those will be rotated back in and we'll have some new heroes out. But we've seen a lot of Nero on the Fara. He's been permanently double pocketed, it felt like. Right. And that seems like Charger's strategy currently. Yeah, it still didn't get him a lot done. Hey, you might see some uh, Ash come out. Saw a little Ash last night. Happy not in the lineup, though, so I wouldn't expect Ash right off the bat. It's not really a pocket pick. If any team's going to do it, it'll probably be Chengdu in our second series. But, yeah, no no McCree, no Widow. Very likely no Happy then tonight. On the other side, though, the Hangzhou Spark are going to bring out their roster. That is going to be Godsby, Bezzy, Gushui, Ria, Bebe, and IDK. And, yeah, I mean, I think with uh, Bezzy in the lineup... You would expect Sombra? It was kind of his ace pick. Yeah, I don't think it's too bad at all, especially on control. I mean, you get a lot of uh, you get a lot of room to work with a Sombra. Li Zhang will be our first map of the series and of the day, of course. So we jump in, in on that in just a moment. But Sombra would be a fairly interesting one. However, I think as time has gone on, Sombra has definitely been a hero that has just gotten not even direct nerfs, but just heroes being released. That has just kind of hindered <laughs> yeah. her success, I think, is the best way to put it. Like, people like um, Sigma has not helped, especially with the Rise of Double Shield. It's, it was very hard to actually make her work because the way you want to play her is something like a Tracer where you want to go on the flank. You want to be able to, like, right. pressure the back line and uh, get a lot of damage in, build up your EMP, EMP, and then, you you know, your team hopefully wins the preceding fight. The issue was Hex. That Double Shield, especially with Sigma <laughs> being able to put a shield out uh, yeah. uh, on cooldown is just incredibly oppressive to someone like Sombra, whose playstyle was all about the flanks. Yeah, well, I mean, even trying to get the frontline damage in, because he could always get out. The funny thing was, people would be theorycrafting against double shields. They'd be like, why don't you just run Sombra? It's like, how the hell are you going to charge your EMP? Like, you're just never going to be able to get in and do the damage to get the EMP up. So in theory, it's great, because it cracked shields, but not in practice, necessarily. I wouldn't mind seeing a Sombra pick here, even against a Farah, like, especially on Li Zhang, where the Farah is just over the death pit uh, most of the time, so you just have and drop her out of the sky. Pretty nice. I wonder if Guangzhou is just going to go away from the far because it's such little success on it uh, yesterday, last night, whatever Twilight era that we're living in right now. So we'll see as both teams are going to select heroes now. Right now, Nero, as early on, picked up the far -a. All right. I think Hangzhou might just go with a very traditional May Reaper. Still very good, and Bezzy is a, a really good pick on uh, the May as well. Wouldn't surprise me too much, especially on this point. I want to see if they're actually going to stick with the the sim. I mean, we've seen uh, yeah, some, it's, some it's of the frag movies a little bit earlier on it's in like the week where sim, yeah, yeah, teleport to the top and then you get onto the point rather quickly. Might be just a teleport forward though for the spark. Yeah, we'll Do I say that? Godsby is staying. Yeah, yeah, so we have actually got Farah versus uh, Far Sombra versus the Sombra actually coming out from Bazzi and Godsby still sticking on the sim. No, change of mind again. Bazzi. 
Looks like yeah, Charger changing their mind as well. Point's going to unlock soon. Does mean Spark are going to get the first touch and going to be hard to retake when they have a Sim anime on point. Yeah, it's always really good to get off point here. With Rio on the ball too. You might end up seeing a somber pick here if they lose the point, but that might not even happen. Once you get the Sim on this point, it's exactly what you want. If they lose it though, you would expect to make it off the Symmetra. Unless there's a circumstance where ultimate up where they feel they can recontest that easily. Super hard to actually get in as the ball too. I mean, there's two different types of slows coming out from the TPS. The left and the main, and the turret slow you down as well. Nero's having a good time though. Just peppering the back line. Problem is Spark have already got the cap. Nice teleport forward. A little bit too <laughs> aggressive, I think. By DK. Uh, Rio, there you go. There's the slows I was talking about. A lot of damage. He has frozen up and instantly killed. First blood. To Rhea. Resurrection's gonna come through, but that does mean it is down. Bazzi pops the ice block fairly early. This is the time to go in if you are the charge. Nero with the barrage as well. Paul is gonna come through, but is he actually gonna get that charge off? Rhea once again going down, and so many weak players are from the Spark as they do get bio grenades. As Godsby does end up falling, but Spark continuing the pressure on the front line as they do use the coalescence, and Nero still trying to find an angle to come in with this barrage. Yeah, Cosby did die during that with the Symmetra, so he's gonna switch off and go over to the Tracer, which is always great to see. I love seeing the, the logo in action here so we can get back to the point. Also provides a decent amount of pressure onto the Pharaoh Mercy combo. And just kind of picking apart the back line as well. I mean, pretty much Shu is gonna be alone because Neptuno is gonna be in Euro's pocket the whole time, so potential pickoff uh, there for Cosby. Don't really have straight up fight just yet. Rio dives in once again. There's the barrage. There's the oh my goodness. Yeah, EMP straight on top of Nero. I'm not sure it mattered all too much though. I say EMP. I actually that wasn't EMP because Spark didn't come somewhere. I don't know what I'm talking about. He fell out of the air though. Not entirely sure how that happened, but he got the barrage off and he got a kill. That's what's important. Card end up now just falling over. And that should just be a recap here. Well, a recap, just a cap for the charge. But oh, then Bark now sitting on a blizzard and a bongo. And you're looking at a flux coming to the next fight as well. Yeah, that's what the charge were playing for the entire time. Get Nero to do a ton of splash damage in, staying safe with damage boosted rockets. Eventually get a barrage in, but at 89%, the Spark are only a single fight away from winning this first round of the Jong Tower. And it was a lot. They've got, they've got everything the they want here. Got a blizzard. Whoa! Okay. Where did that blizzard go? What are you? <laughs> you blizzard the stairs. I think he uh, expected Krong and Rio to stay around there a little bit longer. Rio actually got pushed off the map. And Bevy is also down. Got to be uh, peppering the back line, but there's a Matrix right in front of you, so he's not going to be able to do too much damage. He does end up sticking the Diva, but the rest of his team are already just going to pay for this. Rhea did go down fairly early. Another barrage for Nero in the front line. Gushray ends up falling. Rhea finds a little bit of revenge, uh, killing Eileen off, but the resurrection comes through from Neptuno. That Blizzard uh, was the one tool that they really needed to recap that, and it got thrown away on the staircase, unfortunately. Yeah, not great there. I think Godspeed was seduced by the fact they have 90% capture, uh, both overall and on that point, and just thought maybe he hits the hero. Pulse Bomb ends up getting an Ana. I mean, he stuck the Diva, but thinking that maybe Ana's gonna stick around there too, but it does not end up happening, and the Hangzhou Spark throw everything they have at that fight now in a huge economic deficit. This is what we've been seeing also recently, just pocketing him to the high heavens. He's trying to find the Lucio, but IDK is making quick work of him just like flying around. I say that, that's a direct rocket straight on top of Bebe's head as well. Thank you very much. And now Charge in a good position. 80% on the board, 89 for Spark, but now they're finding it incredibly hard to retake. They can't take out Eileen because he's sitting there with EMP. Nero's up in the sky. You haven't got a big hit scan threat to take him out in the air. Got to be still on the tracer. And now charge. One fight territory for them. IDK may have the beat here. That's the only ult they have terrible, actually though. got to use. Yeah, I mean, it, it's all they have. They might have used aggressive. The they get EMP first. He gets hit by it. That's almost it. Yeah, this is it. This should be just done. Kushway and Bazzi end up going down. IDK can beat himself in for sure, but he's only going to land on four. Godsby nearing a pulse bomb as Shu ends up going down. A lot less healing now for the charge, but Neptuno is still high in the skies. Kronk sends out the bomb. Enough time now for Neptuno to find the res, and Neptuno helping Nero. Damage boosting that barrage straight on top of the support's heads. And there we go, charge, trolling the point. Spark forced off any moment now. As soon as they kill Godsby, the round should be all over. That's one point on the board for charge already. That's a game of momentum there. You saw Hangzhou started it off with the Symmetra, was able to get a really nice first capture, but during the first real engagement, they ended up taking it outside of the point area. Godsby fell, 
and that was really giving up the entire control of the point. He was never on the sim again, so Guangzhou was able to play inside there. Nero's able to play inside the point, in the bird nest, as you will, and he's able to get a ton of damage done because he's not worried about slows. And once they took control with the Farah, what, I mean, what do you really have to try to deal with the Farah anymore? I mean, Ash is okay-ish, but she's not McCree, she's not Widow. Yeah, unfortunately that. Uh, cool. I think every <laughs> every hit scout player is like, well, she's not Cree, she's not Widow, <laughs> but uh, kind of Ash, not point. McCree is what her nickname is. Yeah, 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 not Cree. I don't have stun, but I have dynamite, which gets eaten by Diva. Nero is uh, changing up here, so they're not going to stray away from the comp that they played last map, and uh, Nero's been playing. Also recently, they're going to go for a Sim May. Looks like Spark are going to do the same thing. They can all tab after 15 seconds and see what the enemy team are picking. That's exactly what they've done. Good positioning from Charge, though. Able to rush back to the point rather quickly. Nice little boot there. Almost sent two flying off into the lake. But Spark have managed to make their way over the bridge. Nice couple of headshots onto Rio, though. Spark now marching on forward. If they just keep Gushue alive, they should be fine to put themselves on point. Godsby is now going to round up the rest of Charge. The closer they get to Gushue, the more damage they're going to receive from Godsby's Hellfire shotguns. Nero ends up going down. Krong to fall as well. And Spark once again find the first cap. Yeah, train back to spawn as both teams just end up on these mirror match. Yep, I'm just looking at every year, making sure I'm correct because both these teams are known with the odd wild card pick here. But really early on, each way just to stay alive. A lot of it was the architecture too. He was in deep trouble there, but is able to just cut that, that random spire out there on the left side. He uses it to his advantage, stays alive. Oh. That was almost bad news. There's only the Reaper though, so he was able to shift away to safety. Coalescence to start off. Godsby going fairly low, has to keep himself alive. Shift not being used just yet. Rear gets caught off on the sidelines. I mean, quickly dispatches him. Now charge slowly but surely making their way towards the point. Wall is going to isolate Rio though in the side. He goes golden, hides behind the wall as well. Only just getting killed off in the end by Godsby. They do trade kills as uh, Bazzi does end up going down as well, but the Blizzard should seal the deal. No one can move now, no one can play Overwatch, and that should be it. 50% and counting now, and as well, Spark looking good in terms of ultimate economy. Only used that Blizzard in that fight, plus the Coalescence, but it does build up fairly quickly. Baby now on 80% towards another one. Yeah, I'd say uh, Fazzy is about 50-50 on his Blizzards right now. That one being a good one, he got it off before Nero did, but that's now something that the Spark are going to have to deal with. Uh, Bebe is getting near another Coalescence and their Soundberry up, so they've got tools when this Blizzard does eventually come in. See how passively they're playing. They don't want to get caught behind this pillar. I say that. There's a Wolf right behind them. Beautiful Flux, though, to bring up the in the air. Just gives them a little bit more time to play with. Blizzard can still come out, but Nero is going to go down through the shield. Bebe is going out to kill him off. That'll be a boot onto Eileen as well. That beat forward. A little bit questionable, I must say, as there was only yeah. two people left, but 95% of building is what it is. You've got a couple of bolts to really work with now. Charge are going to be trickling onto the point if they can even make it back. 98, 99, there's the OT. Someone did manage to touch. Krong is still on the side. Eileen and Nero are going to be able to come back in, but Krong doesn't quite make it to the point in time, and that will be Spark picking up a round 100-0. The beat looks questionable until you look at the percentage that they have accrued already. It's very likely the final fight. You don't want to end up throwing it away just because you have uh, the ultimate and you want to save it for next fight. That's probably not even going to happen. You said they're coming back in and they're, they're not able to even get the touch on the point. So some people get kind of low. Eileen has launched off the edge. Might as well keep everybody alive there. It's about just situational awareness. If it's 50%, that's a terrible beat. You could probably want to save it. But at 90%, it's just a, a round winning beat. Yeah, I always end up using mine in a, when we win or when we lose. I'm not going to lie, I said my beat's a little bit too long. <laughs> so I'll take that into my rank games, Hex. I'm hey, you got to get the card. you got to get the, the, uh, the beat efficiency Oh, the uh, beat card, yeah, the beat yeah. efficiency. Yeah, I feel that, I feel that. I'm a, a man that plays for the cards. <laughs> you should know that, you play a lot of Hearthstone. Oh, Rhea, yeah, that's not a good place to be in. She knows it's going to kill. Should be an easy cleanup now for the charge. Oh, the arrow, a little bit too far forward there almost. Uh, Wall would have isolated him, and that would have been a quick death. But this time around, Charge are going to count the point first, you can imagine. First Spark are coming in rather rapidly. Only one person went down. It was fairly early on. Charge are going to find the cap regardless, though, and now can just set up shop near the server room, just waiting for Nero to rotate his walls and trap someone off. Eileen hasn't been spotted just yet. A little bit of a sleeper agent in the back line. He's now going to find himself in amongst the rest of the team. Problem is, though, Kron got walled off. 
frozen up, instantly killed, and now Eileen has to get back to the rest of his team as that Coalescence is just destroying everybody through the shields. Ice Block pot fairly late on for Nero. He's going to be able to survive for a little bit longer here as the Coalescence coming through for Shu as well, but the port does get flipped by Spark, and the kills are coming through. IDK and Godsby just cleaning everybody up. Something to note here early on is Rhea's play. He's an interesting guy because I don't really have a great read on him. Is he good? Is he bad? Because a lot of this, he'll get picked first in bad situations. Some of it's the wall. It's not really always his fault. Or he'll get an opening hit. Uh, in this very short map sample that we have so far, that's kind of been the pattern here. Again, just want to point out the classic Rhea Rio uh, matchup here. Super fun. <laughs> There's so many of those. There, there are, are three, uh, three letter names in the league. KSF, KSP, the classics. Nice little wall. They should be able to get round it. Yeah, it's not quite big enough. There's like a small gap you can go because it does get launched in. That's going to be a wall for help. Charge, push back, flux up as well. People go golden and ice block as well for Bazzi so he stays alive. More aggressive Blizzard for the charge. They do run on in. A bongo down as well. Extra damage for Rio. Picks up to himself. Charge now, moving the way on the point. Spark can stall out for a long time, though, as they do put a bongo down themselves. If they can win this fight, as Godsby blows his rate, playing more passive, Shu follows that up with the Coalescence, forcing everybody back, and that'll be Charge. Finding the cap, potentially, but Spark's still in this. They still want to go. Using the beat forward to help Godsby gain position. There's going to be a big blossom in the front line, taking care of Eileen. Does get frozen off and not killed off just yet. Spark are coming back in this somehow, as the beat from Charge is going to save them from the flux for the time being. They do find the flip in the end, as Neptuno actually gets stunned out of his beat. Only just, though, as the Charge eventually get pushed off in the end. Spark finally regaining control. IDK with a, another really interesting beat there. It's just a second too late to save Bushwick. But his team, as you mentioned, uses that extra shielding to be more aggressive. They put Godsby in a good spot to get the Blossom off. End up flipping that back over at 80%. They are going to be one fight away. But this is a fight that on paper, Guangzhou Charge should win. With four ultimates to zero on the board for Hangzhou. IDK doing a good job of charging his beat though. He's one of my favorite Lucios. You gotta look for a miracle wall here, that's gonna be it. Nice halt, nice flux. Everybody's a little bit more hidden though. Around the side. Charge permanently have to touch the point now. Godsby does end up going down. Yeah, wrong side of the team there, unfortunately. Big Blizzard as well, like you said. Almost an unlosable team fight there for the charge. As uh, Spark didn't really have too much in the bank in terms of ults. Now 50% for the charge. They do hold on to the point now. Spark just need one flip and they'll be able to take the map. Yeah, and they're in a decent spot here despite how badly that fight went for them. Guangzhou ended up using a couple of ultimates, the really important ones anyway. Now they're going to match Coalescences, but it's Blizzard versus the Death Blossom. And I take Blizzard 100% of the time. Oh, they must know God, yeah. Well, he uh, kind of revealed himself there. I thought he's trying to go for something sneaky. Coalescence to start off the fight. Damage all rattling through as well, but a counter Coalescence from the Spark. A little bit later, but it shouldn't matter at all. Eileen in the back line, though. Kills off IDK. Good start, but even better one now for the Spark as they take out one of the DPS. They can just corral around Nero now. It should be an easy fight win, but Rhea gets called off in the front line. Gooshway the same. That Rio once again putting down that supercharge to secure the fight, and now only 10% for the Spark to touch. Yeah, he was 15% ahead of Gushway on the Supercharger, so when they open with uh, battling coals, Rio's able to get there and drops it immediately. All that extra damage comes out. Good spot here. IDK, I think tried to go for the beat there, desperation. But oh, he does get the touch, and OT is going to be there, but frozen off the point, booped away, and the charge end up taking their first map. These two teams are so evenly matched, and we've seen it throughout the series against each other all year. I predicted a five-mapper, so, uh, you know, put the kettle on, as, as you would say. Uh, that one goes to three. Very close, very contested. These teams running mirror matches against each other. I think we're in for a long one here. This one really just came down to who had the right alts at the right time on, on pretty much all three rounds. Yeah, that's what it is about the May comps, though, right? It's whoever has Blizzard. Whoever can get up the better wall and isolate the tanks, they're normally the ones that can kind of take control of the fight. If you blow the mate ice block early, you're in a big trouble. Same with the Reaper Wraith as well. It's just such a it's such a crazy ability to kind of get out of any danger. But as soon as you blow it, you're going to have to wait for it to um, come back up again. And therefore, you have to play more safe. It's kind of a, a big snowball that can roll away from you if you're not careful. We're going to jump to a quick break, though, guys. Do not go anywhere. We've got Dorado coming up soon. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheese It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch, it's a mind crunch. And by Zip Chair Gaming. 
the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Hey guys, welcome back. Charge versus the Spark. Charge managed to find the first win on Li Zhang Tower, but Dorado is going to be the next map. A very electric-themed match tonight with the charge versus the spark here and it's gonna be exciting I both these teams really need a win they need a bounce back win of some bad well, results there's no other you know what I have confidence in bad results for them last night maybe some hit scan oh, maybe Dorado, some it's, hit it's good really old fashioned hit scan get the ash out get ash again because Korean Widowmaker are banned and maybe we see a little bit uh, a little bit of May on this map, especially on the first point. But May is a little less strong, especially going on to second. So I can imagine we're going to see Nero Farah, which alludes me to think we potentially see gods be on a, either a tracer pick, obviously not going to counter the Farah there, but just more disruption in the back line, forcing Farah to do something about it. Or we see him transition over to the Ash. But we do step on to the field, though. You see how each team are going to do it. I have a slight audio issue with tech, uh, Hex at the moment, but, you know, you've got my sultry voice to keep you company for the time being. Charge going to be on the offense. Spark on the defense. Now, I'm slightly surprised, especially for this map, not seeing Happy come in, like I said before. Is, uh, knowing that Spark potentially might go a little bit uh, aggressive on the hit scan front, just having a counter hit scan, I don't think would be too bad whatsoever. Doesn't like Spark are going to roll out with Godsby on the Hanzo instead. We uh, do have the May as well for Bazzi. An interesting healer combination too for um for the Spark. Bebe and IDK on the Zen and Bap. And with this comp, really, obviously, you want to hold around the uh, the choke point, of course, with the May. The best thing about having the Orisa and the Dragons combo is very, very reminiscent of uh, London Spitfire oh so long ago using the whole into dragons it's basically a mini mini graviton surge on a cooldown if you can use it correctly it can just be so devastating even if you grab like a couple of people it's more than enough uh, most of the time to win a team fight charger still deciding what they want to play waiting to see what spark have in store for them eileen is going to stick on the somber it seems 
and Nero on the far. I mean, at this point, you might as well, because knowing God's beat on the Hanzo, he's going to have a, a rather rough time taking care of Nero. Nero's rockets are going to rain death from above if they're not careful, because they can use these buildings to such great effect, just dodging around God's beast line of fire. Same with Bazzi. I mean, you're not going to be really wanting to uh, right-click towards Nero in the skies. You're going to be want to focus on the tank line in the front and make sure Rio and Krong aren't on your back as well because Feme is going to be so vulnerable. Charge doing a rather good job, though, of uh, kind of forcing Spark's hand, forcing them all the way back to, uh, to the archway. So they... Uh, we are still having small problems with the Hex, by the way. Just uh, gonna put that out there, so it's gonna be me for the next couple of minutes. Hopefully we should be good. Gooch, we're holding rather far forward, though. And we're doing the same. Now, now the problem persists of Nero just doing so much damage to the back line and Bazzi's horrible time actually trying to wall people off. This tank line's gonna do a good job of just kind of escorting themselves around the wall. However, Godfrey does take out Nero. Neptuno's gonna go down as well. Which we're finding a nice couple of hits. And this is going to be a good setup. But once again, you are in a situation where if uh, Supercharge are able to build up an EMP, your front line's going to instantly die. There is absolutely no way. And I think this is why they're playing the Baptiste and the Zen in order to either get an immortality field off if IDK can get out of the way to the EMP, or if Bebe can get a transcendence, which is even better because it, obviously it can't be destroyed. That would be um, an infinitely better option for them. However, hiding away in this situation is going to be the hardest task. Bebe will just explode at me if he does hit it. Beautiful shots though coming out from IDK. He is getting off Nero. In fact, Charger is just having the roughest time at this point. They are literally waiting for the CMP. That's, that's the only thing they are doing right now. 20% away as well for Eileen. And Nero is going to be able to lay the barrage. But look at the time bag. 1 minute and 40 seconds. You are in a situation now where... You are forced to stay on this comp. You can't change up. If you change up, you've wasted two minutes for absolutely nothing. So Eileen's going to probably EMP and at this point switch if it doesn't work. But now Spark have two support ults online. But IDK is a little bit, um, it's whatever to be honest, because you, you are waiting for the CMP to come in. Rio is going to try and do the same with the mines, make sure no one can kind of get away. IDK and Bebe still playing in the in the main though, which is kind of concerning. You can see the instant dive into Bebe though. Nero does land it direct. Nano boost onto him as well, and Godsby's not going to stand a chance. Nero is going to get walled off, however. A beautiful, beautiful wall coming through from Bazzi to make sure he gets out alive, and him killing off Shu as well is uh, just icing on the cake for the spark. EMP is available for charge, as well as the six people now just bundling onto the payload as they did kill off Bebe fairly early on. The target prioritization was just absolutely paramount, but with the 45 seconds remaining, Spark are going to be able to get back to this point on time. Nero is going to be able to hide away, and uh, again, the damage is, and especially the drop off, is just disgusting for IDK, so he's going to have to get some sick shots off to try and take Nero down or even pressure him out. Supercharger coming through from Gooshway. Should be quite easy to take care of, but for some ungodly reason, Bazzi manages to take out Neptuno in the skies. Damage boost headshot. There's been a blizzard on the sidelines as well for Bazzi to make sure that Shu can't do anything, but a beautiful sleep with a bar grenade to follow up. 10 seconds down remains for the charge. Barrage and EMP available. They need to be able to go onto the point. Point presence not quite there just yet, but Spark still hiding on their ropes. I want to know where Bebe is right now. There he is, Barrage. As soon as I said it, kind of jinxed him a little bit. EMP on top as well, cancelling the flux. This should be it. Point cap is going to be here. Two minutes and 20 seconds. Moving on to second. It took them a while and it took them almost all of their ults or, or at least their dps ults to try and get through that and asleep actually onto the maid to stop them killing the back line but they did it in the end not a, the best time bank in the world unfortunately though it's just a feel bad emp right there you're up trying to get the flux trying to make a play you get hacked out of it you get emp'd out of it uh, my audio has been fine for like two minutes but you were on such a roll oh such a good really job. oh wow okay. <laughs> like, for like 30 seconds i, okay. I thought the map might end so I, just let, I let you go with it solo casting can be fun man I'm yeah. gonna let you save your voice though. We got uh, some more matches to go to. Aren't you kind? Aren't you generous? Uh, well, no, no one's ever described me as that before. <laughs> well, I'm gonna be the first. <laughs> 
Zazie is, is on the really same brand. Gods can absolutely crush on Hanzo too. I mean, it used to be a terrible matchup against Para, but some changes that happened to Hanzo over the last year or so have made him uh, get scanny and reverted. But Nero still just feel like a god right now. You're untouchable. Yeah, he also forced the transcendence as well just by being nanoed. Nero has the barrage. Oh, baby. Oh, oh, please get away. A couple of. Uh, Nice little shots there onto Nero, stops him in his tracks. That's a big rush on the back. Yep, Carney, all that, unfortunately. Double kill for the Farah. Easy as that. You see Rhea just try and eat it up, but he didn't manage to succeed. Both tanks split up in the end. For a second, Godsby switched to not McCree, but he's going to go to Tracer instead. IDK going to Lucio here makes a ton of sense to me. Yes, Batiste can help out and try to put some pressure. You don't really want to be doing that as Batiste. And the Immortality field is never going to stop a barrage. Uh, if Fara uh, and Booster Rockets are going to take on the lamp almost immediately. So compositional changes here for Hangzhou. Both teams with nothing really to work with in this last point. So this is just pure execution. Just like Spark Rage, a little bit better at taking out the tanks. Rio ends up going down. Uh oh, that mercy's so low. Godsby tracking him through the air. Neptuno falling is going to be disaster. And now Eileen, uh, Shu even is going to get jumped on. As soon as your mercy goes down, Shu is dead. It is dead to rights. There is no way you're going to be able to save him. And now with 17 seconds remaining, Charger going to have a difficult time getting back to the point. Nero switching over to the Tracer. Eileen's going to have EMP, but it's going to have to be a big one. But so is Bazzi. Someone's going to touch. It's going to be Eileen as soon as he decloaks. Be on top of the uh, position here. You're still Valkyrie. Like, the MP is just what matters. He's such a good MP as well. Doesn't manage to find the Mercy, unfortunately, but the tanks in the front line are going to get packed up by Lee with the EMP now. Could come in at any moment. He just needs to hit that back line. Maybe an RDK going to get hit. I say back line. I say six, in fact. That'll do. Charge hit him the six man EMP and now cap in the second point as well. Point one in OT. Might as well make it a second. One minute and 30 seconds now to move through the factory. Rolling the dice on that one, it comes up box cars, six EMP, six kills, double sixes there. As Guangzhou continues to push, there's really just better value from the EMP from Eileen. It came in later, but his team, you mentioned Neptuno was able to get the Valkyrie off, stay out of the EMP with so much healing that goes through and also survivability, and that allows Eileen to get to his EMP they're able to use it second and just straight up use it better. Some changes now will come into Guangzhou as they're going to be in a more close quarter brawly composition. And that, of course, means Reaper and Maid. Yeah, Godspeed is going to pulse bomb and switch. He has to. There's, there's no way he's thinking about the Tracer is this. One headshot. Or even just Reaper dueling you out enough normally. Gutwe jumping on the bat line. He knows he has primal. Misses the sleep, unfortunately. Shu, you are dead, my son. I take that back. That's them two no fighting the frag. How did he kill him? I have no idea. There were like four people on him. Bushway didn't have time to hit that primal rage button. Godsby does find the pulse bomb kill that he wanted, though, and killing Eileen off. And now charge still. 30 seconds remains. They are uh, try trying all they might to get round this corner. But Godsby's making their life hell. It's kind of Tracy's job to make everyone uncomfortable. Dead. This is bad. Gushui in the back, primal rage. self strike coming through though. Gushui is taking a whole bunch of damage. 63 HP, managed to get out just in time. Got to be killing off that supercharge is going to be pretty important, but the beat from Mighty K is going to launch everybody forward from the spark. No worries now. They don't need to worry about HP bars. They got 600 plus. God's be finds two. The freeze is going to be there, but Bazzi is really all alone and uh, just dealing with the rest of the back line for charge. There's no way they're going to be able to finish up this one. Godsby finding the stick. See you later. Alligator, Shu going to fall, and this should just be it. OT now ticking down. Rio's going to be finding himself back on the point, using those over shields to good use, but it's going to get frozen up by Bazzi. And there you go. That's all she wrote. Round number one complete is charge. They get to third point almost, 62 meters and a little bit. And now it is Spark's turn to attack. Gushui playing Winston is always fun to watch, and the trust that he has in IDK there. When he goes back in after Primal at about 190 health, I mean, that's less than half of his pool. It's not a good feeling as a Winston to jump in with 190, but the moment he hits the ground and gets in trouble, the beat comes off, keeps him alive. Just the coordination, the split second that that happened was absolutely beautiful from Gushui and IDK, and they're able to... Uh, End up holding that one off just a little bit, giving themselves a chance to try to tie this series up. And how did Charge do it? I mean, on the on the first point, it was all Nero, really, and Eileen get, obviously getting the EMP off was fairly important, but Nero just forcing so much damage to the back line has just been 
so paramount to their strat. And you can see how well Charge are playing around Nero as well. And Neptuno being his back too has been just excellent. Neptuno's uh, Mercy is just, I think, one of his best heroes without oh, yeah. a doubt. Yeah, Neptuno with the Mercy Pistol, of course, as well. Uh, he's, he's always been a very good Mercy. A lot of <laughs> players take that as an insult, but, you know, there, there's a big difference between a good Mercy and a bad Mercy, mostly Absolutely. just staying alive. Uh, this Guangzhou composition, I mean, it's just got a feeling of inevitability to it. If you don't deal with the, the tanks on the ground and the supports on the ground, eventually you're going to get EMP and you're going to get barraged. And at the Overwatch League level, barrage actually gets a lot done. It's not the press key to die button that it is in pretty much every other rank. Yeah, indeed. I'm still... I'm still 50-50 on this Tracer pick, but if you can make it work, you can make it work. It deals with dive tanks fairly well. Winston has a fairly large head hit box. Same with DB, just kind of spray into the mech. You're going to get headshots. But um, dealing with Nero is not a priority for them right now. It's very much ignore the forest strat unless Bazzy goes for something crazy like translocate a hack in the air. So Nero's going to get a free barrage, basically. Already at 70%, you can see. Dive into the back line. Once again, Nero and Neptuno, yeah, just doing doing God's work up in the sky, saving Shu. Eileen was hacked as well in that situation, but nothing can really be done because the tanks are just getting peppered in the front line before they can do anything. Mirage is up. I think they've been trying to combo uh, Bazzi and Godsby in the back line. Shu got hacked earlier, but Godsby wasn't there to take him out in that fight. They're going to open a pole. Yeah, beautiful positioning from Shu there, jumping up into the high ground, missed the damage from Bushwei. And Coalescence is not going to really do all too much. And now the barrage is available, like you said. Eileen 60% on the EMP, but if uh, Nero does find an in, he will use it. He is going to get nanoed as well, so he's way more difficult to kill than he was before. Barrage on top of the Diva. Matrix runs out. Insta kill on Taria. Bazzi goes down as well. Charged with a good start on the defense, burning down the time bank of the Spark. However, Shu does take a fist to the face as IDK does end up taking him out in the back, but it shouldn't be. Uh, a loss fight. If you lose this right now at IDK, you know, 5Ks, then you got a little bit of a problem there. Neptuno finding the res onto Shu. Bazzi closing into the EMP, but Charge setting themselves up for success. Eileen's done way more damage and has the EMP ready already. Yeah, Charge are ready to go in on this one, though. They're going to have Primal. They're going to have the Pulse Bomb. Pulse Bomb value is just so important as the Tracer, because it's just, with these sustained health rules, it's really hard to actually get final blows. He's, he's going after the Winston. It has to just stick him there, but Primal's no. out. Primal instantly. Beat's going to come through. EMP landed. Problem is, the beat came through as well. IDK a good job of uh, navigating around that. Self-destruction, the battle line, killing off Shu. And now Neptuno falling as well. No support available. Charge are crumbling away. The one tool that they needed, what was it? It was the EMP, but the problem is, IDK was waiting around the corner with a beat. It's the best way to counter the EMP, and it was a very much a game of uh, chicken at the end of the day with the, with the Lucio. Do you want to counter the beat that's going to come out if they go aggressive, or do you want to sit on the beat and wait for that EMP? More often than not, the higher percentage play is just sitting on the beat and just hiding away from the rest of your team as they get EMP and then coming in to save them. Bazzi is setting up for an EMP for himself, though. And it's, it's just never good for the, the charge composition to lose one of your supports. Obviously, it's never good for any team. But you have you think about it, if they lose Neptuno, then Shu maybe has to try to heal Nero. If they lose Shu, then Neptuno has to change his game plan and maybe try to heal everyone else. It puts so much stress on the other team. When you do kill one of the supports, maybe that's why we're seeing the, the constant tracer pick here. Oh, man, that's a big hat, but that's a big bait, even. Oh my goodness, both tanks chasing after Godspeed, but in the back you can see Nero coming out with a big barrage. If it was a bait, a, a reverse bait all along, they baited the bait. The uh, EMP came out on the tanks as they jumped on Godspeed, who was hacked. Godspeed got killed, the EMP hit the tanks, but then Nero's not hacked, and he barrages, and the rest is history. Charged with a beautiful defense here on second point. Still a lot of time, though, for the spark, of course. We'll jump into a quick replay of that exact moment. You can see the tanks were hacked. They 180 a beautiful turn there, 180 from Nero to make sure he didn't actually kill himself from the splash damage. I mean, Rio was so close to shutting that down too, just a meter away, the Matrix just a second too late, doesn't get there, a lot of his team dies. Again, we got to take a look at the pulse bomb efficiency here. Gods be at 92%, if you can get Shu or if you can get Neptuno, that's the pick you want, that's the reason you're playing Tracer. Uh, Rio's gym taking so much damage, so much healing there was that bike, and he did end up landing on him. He's got Primal Rage available as well, but Pulse Bomb did go out, almost hit Rio, but Godsby missing ever so slightly. He doesn't manage to connect, but the damage was done, and Eileen ends up getting taken out by Rio. Rio using that self to strike high in the sky. Almost managed to take out Neptuno. Neptuno on like negative HP right now, at least under 10. 
I'm surprised he actually got out of that alive. Gods me and the rest of Spark are still corralling around this payload. It's been hard to win a straight up fight because again, Nero is just sitting up high in the sky on the Faro. Almost impossible to take him out at this point. And Ali's been sitting on the CMP, almost waiting now for the Spark to jump on in. They know they have beat available. So IDK is going to have to now walk away from the rest of the, uh, rest of the fight and the rest of his team. Again, this uh, game of chicken is really coming into effect. Nero getting nanoed, instantly taking out the Mecha Bria. Barrage from the skies as well should seal the deal for that fight. As Spark now have a minute and 30 to cap the second point. I just really like what else the charge is running with this composition. Yeah, Fair and Mercy is all good, but then a lot of times the response to that is we have to ignore it, especially with the heroes that are available this week. You kind of just have to ignore it, and you try to take down the front line. But the charge are running super mobile tanks. I mean, the only person who's really a static target is Shu. But if you look at his positioning, he's almost always like a mile away and safe and in architecture and doorways and hiding out. So what do you even try to kill if you're Hanjo? You try to get to Shu, I guess, is the easiest target because everyone else can jump away. And, you know, there's even a, a hero on the charge who's invisible. That's not fair. That's not fair. He's using those use cheat codes. <laughs> that I used to get my Nintendo Power. Well, yeah, Gushui is with the Primal Rage. Uh, he's trying to get to the back line. You can see him try and do it. Bazzi with the EMP. He needs to hit Nero in the air, or at least Neptuno. Take out the supports, and uh, the, the lifeline of charge will just disappear. Bazzi now has to recall and now puts himself in an even worse position as they know where he has gone. And you can see Eileen free spraying to make sure that Bazzi can't come out in stealth. EMP is still waiting for him. Gushway disrupting the back line, trying to knock people off. And now the payload in contestion with 15 seconds remaining for the spark. IDK still holding on to the beat, refusing to use it, waiting for the CMP to come out, but it's going to be too little too late. He comes out with the beat, hits three, but Nero has already killed off three people in this fight already. And now it's desperation time for the spark as the charge could go too high up in this series if they can just finally finish Bebe using the coalescence. The EMP comes through. This should just be it. Charge moving forward. Goose Wave may have found a kill. Boaty is here and the pressure has just been piled on. Neptuno coming out in the Valk as well. A hack onto Gooseway. He is just now living alt charge, dying on the point. OT ticking through. There'll be one last ditch attempt by Bazzi to touch the point. But OT should just trickle away from him at this point. Charge just holding on to that EMP for so long and forcing Shu into the worst IDK, sorry, into the worst position possible for Lucio. He didn't want to use that beat at all. It was the game of chicken and charge end up winning it two to zero now in the series. Yeah, I mean, it's just so frustrating if you're the spark too, because even if you get a kill and they, they got shoe a couple of times, but with these mobile tanks I was mentioning, the tanks just go and cover for the, the resurrection. So it's essentially playing seven V six because they were never able to deny resurrections at all. The tanks are always going to be mobile and they're getting healed from both the Ana and the mercy in those situations. And, you kind of just feel for him. It's uh, when we started talking about hero pools, at, we we had a meeting about it, and I was like, "Well, what happens if Widow and, and McCree get banned in the same week?" And my, the answer I was given was, "Well, it's just a week. Well, we're just gonna have a fair week, I guess." <laughs> and uh, we've seen it happen uh, so far for the charge. They're just sticking with it, and yeah, her two best counters are straight up out of the game. It puts a lot of pressure on the tanks. So you run dive tanks, you run the diva at it to try to deal with it. But you know, divas had some changes. It's not quite. Uh, I don't think it's still three seconds on the, on the cooldown. Four the seconds cap. now. Four yeah. seconds now, which, you know, in, in Overwatch time is an eternity. So it's harder for D.Va to deal with it. You see the Winston. It just it takes so much attention to deal with. And then when you finally succeed, it just gets rezzed again. And it's just demoralizing. Well, the, the charge have been running with this one strat, right? They've been running the fire. They've been hard pocketing Nero and have Eileen just waiting in the wings with the EMP that whole time. Yeah. It does put Spark in a situation where, like I said before, they have to either kill off the Sombra, who's permanently invisible, or try and kill the back line and ignore the Farah. It's Charge has just uh, got this comp down to a T, it seems, especially in this match, going up 2-0. Yeah. We're going to jump to a quick break, guys. Do not go anywhere. Map number three, coming up soon. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, helping you stay connected to what matters most. Learn about T-Mobile's COVID-19 response on T-Mobile.com. And by State Farm. For auto, home, or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
Hey guys, welcome back. This is your Game Break presented by Pringles Wavy. My name is yours, of course, joined by Hex. And let's talk about what we just... You laugh every time I do the intro, mate. I what, know, there's, like, there's something that's funny about hearing a grown man say, I am Jaws. I am Jaws. My name is Jaws. <laughs> J-A-W-S. And my name, real name is Jack. If you Or yeah. Jack Jack, if you're uh, At some least people fast food delivery will companies. Ac- will occasionally refer to you as Jack. No one even knows my real name. I like Truly. amongst our circle of friends, like literally everyone has just called me Hex for like three years now. It's because it's Which, it's, it's fine. Which is fine. It's fine. That's I think we okay. have something to get to though, Jack. I was <laughs> just gonna call me Jack for the sake of it. I think we're gonna <laughs> jump to our crunch time. Crunch by Pringles Wavy. Let's get it. Right, like we said before, Hex. We're in a situation now where Charge are playing chicken with their ultimates and they're waiting on the CMP because they're waiting on the beat coming through from uh, Spark. How are Spark going to come back into this? Because they are now two maps down. This could just be a straight 3-0 for the charge. Yeah, I was trying to think a little bit about what uh, Chengdu did to Guangzhou yesterday. And the, the crunch now for Hangzhou is do you, do you switch your compositions here? Because Chengdu was able to run a little bit of the Ash. That's not great. But they did run their, their own Fara against it, too. And what that'll do is at least the Fara has to do something other than just rain rockets down on you. You have to pay a little bit of attention to the opposing Fara in the Top Gun dogfight in the sky. Uh, and at, at least it's two less rockets a clip that are just getting pumped into your tank line and it gives your your guys on the ground a fighting chance right now there's just no hero that they can pick that will just straight up shut them down unless they try to go with with a mere composition and try to run maybe a far up for the spark team but it's not really a hero that they've run a ton of historically so something has to change maybe you start running an ana as well just to get a nano onto your diva perhaps or uh, just to put some pressure uh maybe you can deny resurrections with a nades and sleep darts but something's got to give right now because nero is just living the emperor life he really is i mean there was one kill from idk when he was playing the uh the baptiste but that was really about it being baptiste good hit scan problem is his uh damage drop off is kind of insane and it's really bad at dealing with farah especially the way nero's playing it because nero just sits up in the sky box basically at the top of the map just firing rockets down into the support line to try and deal as much damage as possible even to the tanks that are trying to dive in it's a tough situation for the spark to be in they are two zero down right now can they come back we have to wait and see we're going to jump to a quick break do not go anywhere map number three on your screen soon the overwatch league is brought to you by pringles waving big crunch big flavor
The Overwatch League is brought to you by HyperX. Unleash your style, unleash your fury. With HyperX Fury Memory. And by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Hey guys, welcome back. Charge 2-0 up. About to go into the third map. No answers for Nero. That has been the entire kind of storyline for this match in this series already. How are they going to do it? We're going to have to find out. Yeah, Eileen as well has just been playing such a, uh, just a sick Sombra currently. Have Spark got anything in their back pocket left to pick? Are they going to pick Hanzo again? Are they going to maybe pick up an Ash? Maybe Godsby picks up the Kree hopefully next week to counter Nero Farah. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, I bet he's kind of kicking himself right now looking at the uh, hero rotation, that's for sure. Well, no reprieve map-wise either, as our next map, I believe, is going to be Eichenwalde. And it's a map that even when Farah's not good and her counters are in the game, Farah will play on Eichenwalde. You can play her on defense on first. You can play her offense on first. Very good map, uh, mostly because of the giant stone tower that you can just play around. It's just a, it's like a shield you can just hang out behind, but it, it never goes down, never cracks, never takes damage. So I do anticipate that the charge will be playing on I, uh, Farah again on Eichenwalde, and right now... I mean, you saw Gosby try to do a little bit of the Hanzo anti Farah, but it's just not its not working. So maybe you run your own Farah. I think there's a lot of things they could do. I think the, the one thing they shouldn't do is just keep trying to run what they're going to do. It's also possible you could just go with like a, a May Reaper and just try to get walls in and get isolation picks that way. And, you know, at some point you have to ignore the sky. But the problem <laughs> is the charge keep running these mobile heroes and there's no one to isolate. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, there's two ways to play around Farah. Kill her with hit scan, or ignore Farah, kill backline, kill tanks. Problem is, well, turns out the tank's pretty good at Wrecking Ball and D.Va, and uh, just any dive tank imaginable. Winston as well. There is absolutely yeah. no way to uh, deal with that or wall them in, because they can just leap away or roll away or use thrusters. Four-second thrusters, by the way, not three seconds now, thankfully. I mean, that was... Uh, yeah. Well, that was just larger Farah was uh, was Diva for a time being. Wasn't this uh, this was the map I think that we saw? Uh, I want to say Hawk um, just completely shut down a Farah on Diva with three second boosters. Uh, it's it's possible. It's either Hawk or Gator. I don't know. There are a lot of animal names on that squad, but hey, pretty there, sure it was actually Hawk. there are. Yeah, wait. Yeah. Well, hang on a second, eh? <laughs> maybe conspiracy <laughs> lining yeah. up. It's, it's the animal a... spirit team for sure. Yeah, the animal um, spirit team is what I was thinking. Yeah, right now it looks like the Spark are going to try to put Godsby on the Hanzo again. I think having the Zenyatta in this comp is super helpful. It's it's always so frustrating when you're playing against a Fair Mercy and your team's just like, 76, why aren't you killing them? And like, there's two of them. There's one of me. Like, I got somebody, you got to give me a little bit of help. It's literally a 2v1 the whole time. So getting a Zenyatta in the mix to get Discord orbs up is really important. Um, we'll see what Guangzhou wants to come out on here. Oddly enough, it's almost a, a better defensive first for far than it is offensive first, but... Um, I would not put it past Guangzhou to just switch this up. Both teams have made a lot of switches the moment they see the other team's running, and there it is. Nero is going to go onto the Farah again, and uh, yeah, they broke. Don't fix it. Surprise, surprise. He's definitely going to flank around. There's absolutely, there's absolutely no reason why you wouldn't. Yeah, there you go. He's taking the Doom Fist route. They know, though. I mean, you're, you're going to be looking there at some point if you are uh, the bat. Yeah, you you expect it. The if you don't expect it, you're just going to lose because your Zen's going to get one shot. They're going to hide in the bar, it seems. Worst area to be in if you go to Safara, but that's the only place you can be in, unfortunately. Because those rockets are going to do a whole bunch of damage if you're just out in the open. And now, the waiting game. That's trying to find anything here. I mean, Godsby is just taking shots of what he can, but look how small they are. It's like a three pixel shot a mile away. You have to get a little bit lucky as a Hanzo to try to hit that shot. Even if you do, it's not going to kill him. Really. Well, if you go on twitch.com slash yourscast, you'll see me hit the sickest shot of Dorado on a far up using Hanzo. So I can teach Godsby a thing or two about losing so games. Not you're falling into the, the players promoting themselves in the chat. <laughs> the oh, shit. yeah. I wasn't actually <laughs> thinking about that, but yeah, well, I guess I am now. If they can, why can't? If they can, why can't? I'm kidding. Rio is going to get discorded. Still, uh, there does promote uh, kind of a problem here for Charge. Point presence is almost negative for them, which is going to be a bit of an issue. They have to win out a fight like straight up on the field because you're in a situation where your dive tanks are so good at getting to the back line. The problem is, if they do, you're going to get uh, you're going to get met by both the Arissa and the Sigma. 
th this very wall mate just waiting for 50 percent for Nero, um, just to get the barrage in. And everyone's at the door. Oh my goodness, he almost died instantly. Dragon's coming out as well. Poor God, to be potentially trying to kill far there, but uh, just went a little bit able. Nice boop on to the Sigma to get him out of the cover. Rio does end up going down. Like you were saying before, Hex, those Discord Orbs doing absolute wonders to the tanks in the front line. And now, once again, we're in a situation where we're waiting for that EMP and the Barrage. But, Window is going to come through. Bazzy with a one-shot, killing off Eileen. Good start. Almost Neptune got sucked into that Vortex, but he's going to be okay. He's going to live another day. But two minutes have elapsed and little point presence. In fact, no point presence for the charge right now. It's a super important kill into Eileen because he was going to get to his EMP during that fight if it doesn't happen, and they had no response to it. Now at least you have a Transcendence you can use, so that's going to be the micro matchup between Eileen and the opposing Zenyatta. And they're just looking to find an entrance here to try to get the Nano in. What a day. Oh, that was such a sick nade on Godspe, but Immortality Field just did just save him. He was like an inch away from dying. Like you said, they're trying to get the EMP in. Transcendence has been used by Bebe Bay Bay is a very, very bad sign for the Spy. And now Wileen can just basically set up. Bebe's still not going to want to get caught with this. There's the EMP. It does hit two, but it's only the tanks. They're going to be able to survive for the time being. Another bio grenade lands on the back for Spark, but quickly killed off. Is God uh, is uh, Eileen even and Rio make that a triple for Godsby? Thank you very much, Ashu and oh. Neptuno as well. Godsby on the hands. Oh, did we doubt him, Hex? Yes, we did. Should we <laughs> now? No, we shouldn't. Well, this was the plan. This is why he was taking Hanzo on the earlier maps. This is why he had it on Dorado, because Hanzo can be a decent-ish counter to a Baron Mercy. Um, but it also is really good against everything else. Storm Air is a really nice ability, and Godspeed just has a ridiculous, just ridiculous aim. This is what we expected from him out of uh, Season 2 in Overwatch. The meta didn't quite shape his way, but there's a lot of stars that you haven't even seen shine yet. Eileen, 20% on the EMP. Now they have to rely on Nero's Barrage. Supercharger coming out for Gooshway. Rio jumped in in the back, but Immortality Field saved him. The Dragon Strike actually on the exiting members of charge. Nero's found himself in the Barrage in the back. Heidi ends up going down for Bebe with a quick couple of orbs to the face. Ends up taking out Gooshway, and now only a couple of seconds remain. There will be a tick coming through for the charge as the Resurrection did land on Nero, but there is still point presence for the Spark. Rhea gets hacked out of his flux as there is still a mate on the field. Godsby once again clicking on heads, taking out Nero. There's a lot of members of charge now on the point. It's going to be a miracle if that, if Spark can get back on. Godsby's going to have to click a couple more. Bazzi does end up falling, and that may be it as Krong with the self-destruct and even Rio with the primal rage is going to instantly kill off anybody in their path. They eventually cap the point, but once again, charge on the brink of ending the round there and then. It's OT and it's only two and a bit minutes now added to the clock. Yeah, who knows what happens if that dragon strike doesn't get eaten by Krong. It was a really interesting angle and he saw a couple people through on silhouettes, but it did get gobbled up. And after that, Gosby was never able to really get back in again. The uh, charged tanks did a really good job of just clogging up the doorway and not letting anybody in while the heels were still alive behind him. So really nice clutch, clutch push there. And at least Guangzhou, uh, well, at least Hangzhou had done enough to make Nero switch off of the, the burn. The Gutro's in the front line as well. There was no way he was going to escape from that. Eileen from the top rope did end up hitting it. Nice EMP on the tanks. That's all you really need. I mean, if you're Gutro at that point, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's no hope for you, unfortunately, especially as uh, you can see a Spark changing off their support. They don't have the Zen, they don't have the immortality field from the back now. They're on kind of an even playing field, I will say, because Nero is now not on the far. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really nice. It's something that they don't have to worry about, but Nero on the Tracer is no slouch either, and now they're in a super bad position here. Primal Rage is ready, and now they're going to have to fight on the bridge. I need to tell you how that ends sometimes. Just, just the worst. IDK, booping him away for the time being, but he has found his way into the castle. Nice little hack there, and you can basically just stand at the doors at this point. Beautiful thing to do, Rhea. That pulse bomb was uh, eating all up, and Nero ends up paying for his life of it as well. Gushway in the back, trying to find some support. Self-destruct on point, doesn't quite demech Rhea. His charge are still contesting, as they do have 40 seconds now remaining. IDK still sitting on this beat. It's going to be important for this last fight as they just round up the rest of the members of Charge. If Charge can corral here and attack as six, it's going to be a good spot for them to do so. But 
issue is IDK still sitting on the beat. Comes out just in time. Six players hit. Godby gets hacked as they do get back onto the point. Counter beat comes through for the charge. Self destruct high in the sky. They've got to go remove those shields or at least remove their bodies. They do just that as IDK does chase Kron off the map as the EMP does come through from Bazzi as well. That should just be all said and done. A late EMP from Eileen has got to be IDK and Bazzi clean up the rest. The charge now, last ditch attempts to try and touch the payload as the time ticks down. Four seconds now, three is Kron coming back on the ball. He's gonna get body blocked. And if he even got there, he would have gotten boots just before second point. Charge, they almost managed to get it, but again, it was the clutch beat from IDK to save them at the very end. Yeah, uh, IDK, the sixth person beats, and then he's just an assassin as well. I think I talked about this last time we watched the Spark about how there's two different styles of Lucios. Um, there's the aggressive Lucio, then you've got kind of like a, a moth Lucio, which is top three in the world easily, but he's always in the right place at the right time. But IDK has them both in his pocket, and he hits that switch. Yeah, everyone's alive now. Um, don't worry about me. I'm just going to go hunt down supports. He takes out a couple other supports. He's been the most consistent part of this Hangzhou team since, well, since day one, since this roster was ever put together. You can see why they kept him on, that is for sure. Now, Hex, we're going to talk about the defense. The defensive bar, like you were saying, it's ridiculously strong because you can hide around the clock tower and the clock tower basically is a permanent shield problem was last time of course we did see gods be uh take the, the, the fight to the ground and then in the end you end up killing off the fire just by proxy because there's just so much damage flying towards her can gods be do the same thing here it's going to be incredibly hard for him to actually push through and get a good angle on the fire and that's going to be the main problem yeah, and the fire can just rain in so much damage. The, the the attackers don't have a whole lot of options as far as where you're gonna go in. Most of these maps just have a, like one May sized wall to be able to get in. It's actually interesting that the Spark are gonna run their own May because at worst case scenario, it will provide you cover to get in. Uh, it's one of the best shields in the game, but they're gonna make a switch. Got to be on Tracer, as he on the Sombra. Oh, swift. <laughs> Swift knuckle to the forehead of the monkey there. Did not manage to get out in time, luckily. Nothing to stun her, of course. No brig, no crib. Uh, he's out of rotation. Still a lot of damage. is going to rain forward, like you said. Rio is going to get hacked, but he should just be able to walk that off. Okay. Oh, second rocket did it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, team. Well, she was dead. Not a good start for charge. If first spark can, yeah, find another thing. This could just be it. Rio actually ends up going down, got hacked up. Rio is also going to take out Kron. This looked really good for the start for the charge, but now flipping straight over. You can see how far back Nero in the house has to play. He's scared of Rio, of course, and if he does get close to the point, Bazzi can basically just hack him out of the skies. Now, God's be almost sitting on a pulse bomb too, can almost spawn cap, and it does look like they're not even going to touch. I say that. 96%, they do manage to get back on the point on time. God's be with the pulse, manages to snipe Rhea out of the skies. Pulse bomb does miss, but support goes down regardless. Tracer hands out, doesn't matter what God's be plays, he's going to be good at it. Shoe falling, and now Bebe does get traded out, but Spark still with a man advantage on points. However,. I cannot see anything right now, so Hex, please take it away. Yeah, no problem. It was a little bit of a half disengage that happened there early on when they were making trades, and then they caught another person out of the off tank. So I'm losing back. your main support feels really, really bad, and they lost Bebe, but they kind of halfway back out. IDK is enough healing to keep everybody topped up, and then you're going to just have better trades on the offense there. Everyone's going to be back quicker, and so Spark used that to their advantage and roll through. All right, back. We're good. We're good. Just want to pick up that. Back into the fight. Eileen and Bazzi both have EMP ready. We'll use a couple of percent off each. Take two get that one instantly used. Oh my goodness. It, Eileen build it up straight in the fight, but the beat is going to come from IDK once again. IDK has just been such a clutch Lucio player, and that's what you really need from your support in the backs. Gushray finds two in Nero and Shu. This is going to be it. Beautiful re, uh, re EMP, like a, a counter engage, sorry, from Bazzi. EMP on top of EMP, but the beat came out from IDK a little bit sooner and uh, charge. They're wondering what really happened in that engagement. They don't have a support ultimate really to back themselves up in, that, in those situations. You really wanted to say re-MP, didn't you? I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would have sounded awful, though. Up uh, it. But, <laughs> hey, it'd be like that. It'd be like that. Now, Barrage is ready, though. That's me also with the Pulse Bomb. Charge in a pretty decent position here as far as oh. ultimate. <gasps> that Pulse Bomb doesn't find anything. Oh, no! Bye. 
Oh, you hate to see it. The sleeper, then the boom into the pit. Unlucky. That's a, that's a go again for Spark. Yeah, falling to your death unconscious is, uh, I, know, I mean, there's worse ways to die, sure. At least he was unconscious, not yeah. screaming <laughs> yeah. all the way down. That is true. <laughs> Always got to look at the well, bright there, bright side. Well, Rhea's, Rhea's in a good spot to get uh, revenge here because I think one of their best anti Pharah of Mercy tools is going to be the self destruct if they can find them out in the open. Oh. Yeah, wow. Lucky. Yeah, hacked, slept. There's not much else you can really do in those situations. I think takes out two. They can take these fights uh, rather readily here, but Spark, you know, they can build up to a lot of ults at this point. They have got two minutes and 50 seconds that, uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> he <laughs> sleeps from How Shu. How many sleep kills in a row is are this? Just insane. He's got what? He's got Rhea, it's got three in a row. an IDK at the end there as well. My goodness. In under a minute. Yeah, she was, uh, she was playing pretty well. Yeah, to say, <laughs> to say the least. As he's gonna touch payload. I like had four enemies slept, and we just saw three of them. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, oh, we just spotted Eileen. Charge sitting on six holes, though. That's going to be the problem. Rio, Spark are getting there, though. They are definitely getting there. They have stall out ults, and then they can get EMP of their own. It just matter. I think I need to engage immediately. So I'm sure this guy. Oh, time counting down. Two minutes remain. Eileen dies. EMP still available. And now this is it. Nero in the back line does find the barrage. He kills off Rhea, but is it going to be enough? Godsby takes out Shu as well. Rio almost manages to get away. Oh my goodness, IDK. Rio, Nero does find two, but the car is still being contested. And now he doesn't have Neptuno to back him up. He is so, so low. Trying to keep himself alive. 17 HP, almost nearing the death zone, but Godsby finishes him up. Eileen's going to come back with the EMP, and it's going to have to be the clutch factor. IDK doesn't have the beat to back him up with it, but Pazzi ends up taking down Neptuno. Spark are now just bleeding out the charge. The EMP finally lands. Gushway and Rhea in a little bit of a rough situation on the payload. Luckily for charge, the spawn points are so, so close to them. IDK is going to get hacked as well if he's not careful. Almost manages to escape, just to ascend himself down into the moat. And now Spark sitting on one minute to go. That was a really tough fight for the Spark because it looked all the way lost to start off the fight, but then they started getting trades, and you have both Godsby and Bazzi holding ultimates. And if that EMP from Bazzi comes out maybe before that he ends up using it, um, maybe they switch it, but it's so hard because you don't want to throw good ultimates after bad. They end up investing them both anyway, considering a composition switch, but then they switch back. A bunch of zeros on the ultimate charge for the Spark, but... There's one guy who has ultimate, and that's IDK. We've seen him be a playmaker before. Charge have changed a bunch up as well. Reaper May, Brawlcom. Yeah, they got, uh, gave a lot of space off. You can see Spark now just on the payload. Rhea doesn't have to go frozen up. There's the beat to save him. Six man, now marching on forward. Tracer with 600 HP, piloted by Godsby. What's more scary than that? Coalescence is going to rack it through the team, and you can see them trying to duck, dip, dive, and dodge as Godsby is so, so low in this situation. IDK is also just trying to find these big booms, but these plays are just not happening. Bebe and Rhea end up going down and charge, and now 10 seconds away from taking this series, just a clean 3-0. Bebe even died with a Coalescence. A couple of meters now remains if someone needs to touch in order to keep it contested. OT is not going to trigger if they don't get back in time. There's going to be a Primal Rage in Winston. OT is finally there as IDK manages to get the touch, but there are no ults really remaining. Remaining. Pulse Bomb gets thrown on in by Godsby, but it's gonna swing wide. Baby's gonna be able to get back in time, but the charge is sitting on a couple of bolts of their own. It is now all on to Baby to try and find these picks. The self destruct to clear everybody away, even a wall to pressure them off too. The coalescence doing next to nothing, trying to get the damage through. Now the charge is sitting on the payload, looking for the picks. Gooshway is going to be the first to fall, but Nero gets booted off by Batty somehow. And EMP lands on the payload, and his self-destruct is big. Rio ends up going down, and Spark have found their way back into this game. Somehow, some way they've done it. The beat has come through from charge, though, and they just need to focus their fire onto at least one target in the front. Coalescence from Baby is coming up soon. Eileen gets booted away as he tries to go for the big death blossom, but still, Spark holding on to this fight. Another the beat's gonna have to come out soon as that blizzard is just freezing every up of the payload. Even another coalescence. How are they still alive? How is this fight still going? There has been about 16 million deaths at this point, but still the charge are fighting on. Spark eventually another wiping tribal. them off the map as Nero and Krong end up going down. It is now the ball to kill off, and as well as the supports, the fight is finally 
whittling the way down. There we go. Bazzi with a second EMP. <laughs> two beats, two coals, two pulses. So many O's thrown into that fight. Spark are still alive in this series as the charge couldn't quite hold on. Oh, fighting for their lives there. I mean, at the end, you kind of see it coming that the self-destruct goes off in the sky and everyone gets EMP and you're like, that's got to get something, right? EMP into self-destruct and mop up whole teams. So obviously you're, you're banking on one or two kills. And then everybody, it was really kind of cool by the spark that they weren't just throwing bodies at it. They were really methodical about who was going to touch, who was going to reset over time. Uh, there were a couple times that Guchwe had to take a, an off angle and come up over top so he could touch. And then he's going to help out his team in a couple different situations because someone else is on cart duty so they kept it alive really long and even when they were getting pushed back by coalescence they weren't dying to it they were backing up just enough so they could stay alive and then brought that back in it bought them enough time for that emp self-destruct i thought nero might come back and win that with the blizzard that's why the death blossom was supposed to buy time for the the charge there but just enough ultimates and uh yeah that was uh that was an alt fiesta if you will yeah, two EMPs to win a win a fight. Who thought you'd see that? And like you said, the, the second blizzard. primal is so funny to me too. Yeah, like, every, at least eighteen alts plus. I want to bet. Happened yeah, in that fight. I'm going to ring up some. I'm going to ring up the stat guys a little bit later on yeah, and ask how many alts were actually used. Up. Just insanity. But Spark is still in this series. Charge still one map away, sitting on match point. We're going to jump to a quick break, guys. Do not go anywhere. You're not going to want to miss the next one. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, helping you stay connected to what matters most. Learn about T-Mobile's COVID-19 response on T-Mobile.com. And by State Farm. For auto, home, or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Welcome back, everybody. After a, uh, well, a factory full of ultimates, uh, <laughs> Spark do manage to stay alive in the series. That two-plus minute fight, I think the entire series has lasted uh, a little bit shorter than that fight, to be honest with you. They do manage to hold, well, no, sorry, cap on the bridge of Eichenwalder. And now we're moving on to map number three. Hex. <laughs> It's it's the it's the chaos we expected, the <laughs> chaos we've come to we've come to know from the charge and the spark against each other there. Uh, not the cleanest play in the world, but Hangzhou definitely look a little bit better when they don't have to face off against a Farah, so making him switch early on was a really good decision. It's kind of hard to play the Farah there on the second point, but, you know, with no McCree, no Widow, you kind of just keep trying it. But that was just a fiesta at the end, and it it's always comes down to a razor's hair between uh, these two teams, like... 
it's just I got this alt, and now we have a kill and a half from my coalescence, where you only got a kill and a quarter, so now we win. Like That's just how close those things were happening. IDK, a huge playmaker for this team. Godsby on the tracer. Like Hangzhou is not out of it yet, but our next map is going to be Volskaya, where I don't believe they've won yet this year. Oof. That's and I believe I they... They I mean, last lost Volskaya to the Guangzhou charge in a manner in which they didn't even get on the point to defend. I think it went to two halves, and then the charge just walked out of the point, and the spark did not contest, and they lost it. So that's a that's a feel-bad moment. Hey, sometimes you're on the point for two minutes contesting. Sometimes you're just not <laughs> on the point to contest at all. That's just how it <laughs> be sometimes. I'm sure. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes you can't take Numbani with four minutes in your bank. Yeah, you know, well, so sometimes, sometimes that can't sometimes happen either. That <laughs> I mean, this is a, I mean, I, I, you know, just a little bit of the history, but this is kind of how these teams have felt over the last two years, where not always the cleanest and most coordinated play, but they're able to scrap it out mechanically versus a lot of teams. Uh, both these teams made the playoffs last year. The Spark had, had a great inaugural season as did the charge uh, all of our teams in this region actually performed very well but it never really you never really felt super super confident unless you go in there and you're just watching like oh Godsby has it today right and he's just gonna yeah. crush on it but neither of these teams inspire a great deal of confidence no matter who they're playing against oh well, if you look at the history just between the two squads themselves right they're even right now uh, two apiece uh, beating each other however mm -hmm. they've almost always gone to map five Four yeah. of those games, they've uh, <laughs> three out of the four, sorry, they've gone to map five. So we could be yeah. in for another two maps potentially. Well, get your get your predictions in any five map Andes out there. Your five map uh, Andy, three <laughs> one Andes, a lot of three one Andes normally. Just so uh, Andy, you know, Andy is everywhere. Andy is everywhere. I was <laughs> we were talking about this a little bit earlier on. Like it's so strange because uh, my middle name is Andrew. And mm -hmm. uh, like having that Andy thing, I'm like, yeah. I, although obviously no one goes by their middle name anyway, but it's just, it's just funny how names. Well, become guess memes. what? Now that I know that, you're Caster Andy. Cast, Andy. Caster, Caster Andy. 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 <laughs> oh my god. Please, All right, let's no. see. What, I don't want to be. Uh, uh, no, I won't do that. I like. I think it's really unfortunate when people get saddled with nicknames and they don't yeah. like them, and no one will ever give up on it. Like that just kind of sucks, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, as the youngest of four, I grew up with that oh. uh, very often. <laughs> they would find out whatever I didn't like, and that was my new name for that month. Yeah, that month. <laughs> yeah, the month, grueling month that seemed to last for an eternity. Yeah, I was never on that uh, end, luckily enough. All uh, right, let's see. Uh, defensively, Happy's in. Oh, we even missed the substitution. It's my boy too. I've been uh, starting this bandwagon for a long time. Jake tried to jump on it in the podcast the other day, and I was like, "You can be on the bandwagon," <laughs> but I started this bandwagon. I was the I built the, the I built the Happy bandwagon from scratch. Scratch. All right, so Happy is in on a defensive tracer. Hangzhou trying to figure out what composition they want to run. Um, changing again? I don't know what, yeah, I guess they're changing it again. All right, Hanzo, May. Straight map action in the back line. All right. Got Happy on the tracer. This is going to be on the Hanzo. A lot more shield pressure, of course, from the spark. It's going to be up to Happy to really. Uh, Make sure Bebe is discorded, then he can go in for the assassination. Discorded Zen to get insta killed. I don't know, it's horrible. My goodness. If that architect uh, kill me a couple of times like that, it's honestly just the worst. I don't recommend it. You know, hit soldier as well, as briefly. Charge try to come up and take this high ground, but a better shield presence from the spark as they waited out a little bit. And they're just going to take high ground uncontested here. Drop down. They've got Rio isolated a little bit. That's the thing that you want. Pickup. I think that was a, it must have been a late drop Discord orb straight onto Bebe. She does find a, a return kill, but Happy does end up going down. This always favors the defensive team in this situation because your supports are so safe and uh, Spark have to really go to overextend like Godsby's doing right now. Crop's going to clean him up. Yeah. As soon as one support from the offensive dies, it's just the amount of pressure and the damage you can get down to the which is way too immense normally for you to deal with. Yeah, it really didn't matter there because she was in the immortality field anyway. So even if Godsby comes around clean on that corner, it doesn't matter. But Krong is there on the cleanup. And out of the way these fights are going, it's taking a long time. There's only two minutes left on the clock. At best, that's two good offensive pushes here. And not a ton to work with from the Spark. I mean, they're, they're only 50% to most of their ultimates. Maybe you can drop a, a window here in Amp Matrix, but uh, that's it. Charge in full control. Yeah, Nero's big blizzard here is going to be good. He's got to wait for the drop down once again. That's going to be the game plan, I, I could imagine. Bazzi's going to have to save the wall to maybe uh, separate the rest of the team. 
Flux up high in the sky. Vitalik Field being used though. That's going to be uh, taken out rather quickly. It's kind of trapped on the wall. You see Kron can't really see it. It was a very good uh, immortality field for the time being when I OK. Just get dragged off the map though. Bebe is going to go down. That's what I was talking about. Discord Orb and uh, Happy dispatching him in the back line. And now Happy is just sitting there hunting. Two supports almost added to his kill list. The melee does enough missing and he gets shot in the side by Godsby. Godsby finds three kills in this fight already and now the Spark is sitting themselves on the point. That's really what you want from your hands though to deal with the Tracer in the back. Kronk's gonna find a good kill onto Rhea and there's the Blizzard like I was talking about. Double Blizzard in fact as uh, Bassi also throws his one in but from was charger on the high ground and uh, no one really is really frozen up at all one minute now remains for the spark to try and find themselves a tick on this first point and that was a lot of what they had already used there a couple of late kills here there's a really nice halt that happened early on in that fight from rio to pull a couple down and then that allowed happy to come up up top and clean up some of that fight the Bazzy Blizzard has not been all that great today. Uh, he's had just a couple of missteps and using it late during that fight, not ideal as Nero's able to get a wall up in front of him and just live right through it. Spark, last push here. Gonna have Flux, gonna have Transcendence, and you have the Bongos as well. So you can just open up with Bongos, put them around the corner, and see what you can get done. Just like they can start after that. You can put it in the little house as well. There it is. Way, isn't it? And, uh, well, would you look at that? Everybody scatters. No surprise there. They can give up a little bit of space here. Of course, that uh, so, uh, supercharge is not going to last forever. Nero just clicking away on the side lines here. Getting a little bit of damage done to the shield. Now they attack. One go down. Rhea with the flux, though. Feels off happy to start off the fight. Good play to start off with. However, now they're going to have to deal with Godsby, who's uh, found himself a little cheeky sight line in the back. Big pull. And now they can't use the Mega Rune for any cover, forcing the Transcendence out onto the field. Flux onto Rhea. Kron has uh, been getting some huge fluxes, but the problem is that Transcendence just uh, made sure they stayed alive throughout the entirety of that. Rio ends up going down as well. So now they do find the kill onto Fazzy. The issue is Kron is out in the open. Pulse Bomb is going to land on him at some point if he's not... Sorry, not Pulse Bomb, sorry. Uh, the arrows are going to land straight and true if he's not careful. Godby ends up finishing him off, and that'll be the point capped for the Spark. Three minutes in the time bank as the charge are going to change up to a Hanzo of their own. Tracer not great on the second point, of course. Yeah, nice pull there by Gushui too. You saw Godsby was trying to get damage in on the side angle, so a lot of the players for the charge were moving forward. The moment they moved forward, they got walled off, and it seemed like, well, now you're just not letting Godsby shoot anybody, but the people on the other side of the wall were getting absolutely wrecked, so they put him in a really bad position of, you stay in that room, you're going to get storm arrowed. You come out here, you get ice walled, and Hangzhou put them to the test, able to execute that push. Bazzi's going to be able to move on to the point as well with a Blizzard, and that's the perfect pick almost. She's not going to be back for a little while. you just got to press your W keys now if you're Spark. It's just, uh, yeah, they're kind of... Okay, the dragon has a little bit waylaid. Blizzard, though, in that room. Oh, my goodness, that was aggressive. They knew exactly where they were. They're going to wall themselves off. But the problem is they're still frozen up. Nero ends up going down. Kron ends up, uh, unfortunately, ending his own life with those spheres. And now they move themselves onto the point. Two minutes remains for the spark and charge. going to need to do something. Nero with the blizzard is going to be out to spawn soon, but it might not be enough. There's the dicks. There we go. Two minutes for spark. Charge just got ran over before they can even really do anything. Beautiful flank. Came through yes. for both the main tank and uh, the May on for the high ground. Nero couldn't get the blizzard out, got frozen, and that's it. Push over. Yeah, they had a couple of them set up there just hanging out, and the Spark recognized that they're in a, in a good position if they just get those two kills right there. And their support had already died earlier in that. Um, not that Zen would be up there anyway. But then they just push it in, and they turn that room into a mosh pit. It's a better wall from them, a better blizzard, so they know when to commit. They to commit a couple there, and that's all it really takes on the offense. And the clock was ticking down, and you kind of know that your, your first push on these is going to be your best push. They isolate two targets. The dragon came in to kind of keep them in the room. The dragon went through both doors, so you're not getting out of there. And that was the button for the blizzard to come in. Just a complete mosh pit up there. We couldn't even really get a camera up there. But uh, you saw the kill feed. The, the wall came up and just really nice to be like, okay, it's going to cost us a couple ultimates, but we're going to get two kills, and that should be enough for Volskaya. Yeah, especially just getting rid of Nero. That's really it. I mean, your tanks aren't going to have the best time going up against a May when you don't have one to uh, use the wall defensively. Now Spark get the chance <laughs> to defend. Bazzy's blizzards are like my favorite thing right now. It's either going to be a game-winning blizzard or it's going to be like, ever. what? <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't do mediocre. No, that's fine. I, I, I respect that. No, I, I kind of like I, I like the boomer bust player. TP. 
the high ground. Nero is going to stay. Surely not. Not with this comp, at least. Nope, there you go. Neptuno is going to change over after the speed boost as well. Happy as well. So that teleport did literally nothing uh, but put the Diva on the high ground without using thrusters. But there it is. They do spot the spark comp. Realize there's no ranged, really, apart yeah, from Fazzy. So, Nero jumping over to the bar. Hanjo has to try to take this aggressively on the ground. They've got nothing that shoots up. But I'm not I'm, I'm not going to count Icicles and the Arisa. You know what I mean. <laughs> no, got nothing no, significant dude. that shoots up. We saw up. one kill earlier on on Nero. <laughs> it was back on Dorado, but we still saw him. One in a million. Like you said before, th the three pixel headshot. You can't get it, but it's uh, almost impossible. Oh, Bazzy. Oh, dear. This is bad. Forcing the Iceball so, so early. Go Go I think Gosby actually used Shift there as well. And now we'll charge. But we did mention before, Hex, it's the uh, same situation as previous. They don't really have point presence. They need to win a fight straight up. Nero needs to find kills. We need Happy to find kills or EMP. Nero in the back. It's going to force out uh, the, the the Matrix, but it's really going to be about it. Spark still putting themselves on point. Kinetic Grasp? Grasp, yep. Yeah. Every time I talk to the developers, I'm like, can you please stop giving stuff like eight syllable names? I gotta say it. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be like that, right? <laughs> Say that ten times fast. Kinetic grasp. Say all of Sigma's abilities ten times. Ready fast, chat. Go. I'll, I'll time you once uh, I watch the VOD. Coalescence. Whoa, dearie me. No chance for Neptuno to escape that one. And neither is Nero. Goodbye. That's uh, going to be the only real... Uh, Ability that's going to take out the Far yes. of Mercy. Using that one's not going to be too bad at all. Coalescent shoots up, uh, and then you try to get away from it, and Gosby finds an angle and is actually able to clean up that kill. And like I said, with these long brawly fights, two minutes left to go. Guangzhou can come in here with a Nano Farah barrage, though. Uh, if they want to be really certain of winning a fight, they can wait for EMP as well. Got a lot of tools in their kit. I think at this point you just wait for EMP, you're just going to have to. Yeah, I think so. 95 away, you might as well, right? 95, yeah. Nano boost on the fire too. Just throw everything but the, in. But you know, the, the Spark are doing a good job of being pretty split up. Oh, beautiful boop. Can they actually execute the kill? There's a shield. Oh, no. They didn't quite get it off. Yeah, Gooshway and Rhea. They do end up going down. Resurrection does get interrupted. So uh, we won't see Nero for at least a little while. But happy holding on to the EMP is going to be important. <laughs> Blizzard on the point, that's what we were talking about earlier. Boom or bust. Uh, this time, unfortunately, it's going to be a boom. And uh, the rest of your health bar is going to disappear as well. I mean, IDK we're getting... is going to go down. Bazzy falls, and that will be it. <laughs> point captured. Happy with the EMP. He and might be switching. Looking I'm going to give Bazzy the benefit of the doubt that he was switching there. Okay. Because we're getting close to Bazzy Blizzard being a term now. Bazzy Blizzard, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, mostly because it just sounds cool, a lot of the same letters. But he's going to switch off onto the Sombra here. Guangzhou in a great spot right now, though, offensively. They do switch a couple of things up, but everybody else has ultimate ability. EMP Mines can be really good here. Um, you might just nano in a Reaper, see if you can get him to blossom quicker. Mines are in. Mines are in. Usually got a uh, man attack as well. Self-destructed in the back. Bebe actually gets killed. He gets booted off the edge by Rio. And this is going to be Nero with the Nano. IDK so close to a B, but he gets taken out by Neptuno. Still happy holding on to the EMP. Extremely good push and charge onto Vanilla at this point. The EMP does eventually come out, and that'll be the rest of Spark falling. A nice little cat will do it as soon as they kill off Gooshway. Cosby does end up going down, Neptuno to follow. Gooshway eventually gets picked on up. This will just be a stalling now for the Spark. The beat from Mighty K, a little bit late. They do end up getting booped off the point. Three minute time bank for the charge versus the 154 from the Spark. Happy saving that EMP to the last moment. Beautiful execution from the charge. And although both these teams, Hex, and I want to touch on what we spoke about at the very start of the series, they haven't been looking up over the past couple of weeks. Charge yeah, maybe bad. turning a, uh, a new leaf here with both Nero, especially Happy's uh, EMPs, Eileen's a little bit so-so. It was much more of a, a game of chicken, but I, um, Happy specifically has just been doing just ridiculously well. Yeah, I, I just think that it, there's an added versatility here. If, if Happy can play the, the Sombra as well, which is generally Eileen's pick of a hero, but then you saw Nero was playing the Tracer before, because Eileen wasn't, but I think if Happy can pick up the Sombra to a reasonable amount, there's not really a reason you want to take him out of the lineup, because we've seen what he can do on all means of damage dealers as well. Uh, Guangzhou in a really good spot with three minutes in their time bank. 
Fuck 54 for the Hangzhou Spark there, but Guangzhou did a really good job. They had four ultimates, they switched out two other heroes, and they went to a Reaper and then a Lucio for the speed boost. They nano the Reapers to get him in there, and then he just kind of ran over the team with EMP and everything else that they had. So Guangzhou, I think of the teams, they're looking cleaner than the Spark have over the last couple of days. But Guangzhou did get absolutely bodied last night. Yes, yes they did. IDK. Switch to her. Should be back. Okay, cool. I was going to say, if Zen Lucio, uh, I don't know about that healing pop, especially against spam, you just lose instantly. <laughs> oh, given how these fights are going, too, this might be a single fight scenario for the Hangzhou Spark, so. If we're going to play it. Seconds. Yeah, I mean, I think you play it more conservatively and you try to get to your Blizzard faster. I think that, that's your win condition. Move to the high ground. Or you just go right now and hope to get two fights. But if it backfires, then you're going to be having a worse ultimate situation. She's in the best position. I'd love to be in position for you right now. My goodness. You know, against gods, be obviously hands over, but you're just doing free damage up to the high ground. Just like they got pushed off. Now they're going to have to go up once again. 1 minute 54 was their time back, remember. Now only 1 minute remains. It's going to be a nice little halt. Cretion, not quite landing. Like you said, only one fight scenario right now. Godspeed gets dragged off. I, I believe Bazzy's wall was up there as well. I think Godspeed, I think Bazzy thought Godspeed was over it and walled up, and Godspeed just gets dragged off in the process as well. This is extremely bad for the Spark. Fede ends up getting taken out, and now they're not trying to stagger, but you're just staggering because you have so much HP and not able to get off the map. Charge are now in such an amazing position, oh, like staggering, yeah, Gushue here as well, forcing him to jump off himself. 20 seconds remains for the Spark to touch. 20 seconds remains and they're going to make a bunch of changes too. They were pretty far away from ultimate, so it's not the biggest deal here. But these are all just rush heroes, fast heroes to get to the point. But a lot of single digit alt percentages here. If the charge just don't completely beat this, they're in a great spot. Oh, so that was going to be sick one we want. Gods being happy going pretty low. Like you said, fast heroes now is what they need. Oh, board in the back, he has got shields remaining. Unfortunately, he's waiting and chucked out so much. Discord all wasn't on him, so uh, Happy wasn't able to finish the kill, but he has got Pulse Bomb built on up. Nero already find the first kill. Bazzi with a nice hack, but the rest of the team is falling around him. Pulse Bomb stuck. Good by IDK. Rhea goes down as well. That should be it. Spark aren't going to be able to find a single tick. Krong with a victory flux as well at the end. They've even got a transcendence to fall back on. Kind of a, almost an anticlimactic round, it felt like their Hex uh, Spark yeah. just taking so long to actually set up. Didn't really have a full fight, it seemed. No, and I, I believe this is the exact scenario that we were in last time these teams fought each other a little over, uh, a little over a week ago. So the Charge and Spark both uh, completed, and then the Charge had a chance to win the map, and the Spark never contested the point. So you don't want a repeat of that. Three minutes, I'd say that's a solid two fights, even if they're knockout, dragout fights like we've seen. The Spark had about 30 seconds to get back to the point, so you'd imagine the charge would as well. And Hangzhou Spark, I mean, they're on a pretty rough losing streak right now and try to break it open. There's been signs of life from them, from some of their players, but overall, Guangzhou is just a little more put together, a little more complete. They're not making mistakes. Like you said, maybe a couple of these walls have been miscommunicated. Um, it's cost them lives and thus fights. And the charge, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if you come out with Nero. Three minutes, uh, I mean, it feels inevitable. Like I said, that composition with Ifar always feels like it's just an inevitability kind of thing. Right now, he's going to go on the uh, sim, and neither of the supports are on. Oh, no, see, they're probably, probably I just think they're just going to teleport up, so if, they're hi yeah. if someone's hiding from the spark, you can just, like, reveal them. That's normally the strat. They're on the oh, Ash, in fact. Yeah, so yeah, they just want to... looking, yeah. yeah they they're looking for that. a halt headshot. Got a disgusting uh, damage boost on the Ash. So much damage. One shot's a Tracer, of course. Two went to take Every, Everything well. one shot's a tr Tracer. Yeah, a bad word, yeah. one shot's a Tracer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Poor Tracer with 150 HP. Yeah, Here right. on the far, like you said. Yeah, so this is, I think you're just, you're, you're going to play this super safe, super passive. 33%, EMP, barrage, whatever else you need. Um, I just think you never put yourself in any sort of danger here. Godspeed, yeah. So Godspeed's just trying to play for the supports at this point. No, obviously, you can't really affect the fight. I'm trying to take care of Nero. Nice little halt. Yeah, putting that under a high ground is going to be big. Less, uh, a lot less safe. Hack on to Gooshway as well, though. 
And now Nero can just basically do what he wants. Look at this damage. He was already pumping into the back line. In fact, the rest of Spark is just going to jump on the front line and charge. Rio does end up going down, but Gushra ends up falling too. Nero still doing a whole bunch in the skies. Barrage almost built up. He could be in this fight forever as well, mind you, because he has got Neptuno at his back. So he doesn't really have to fear anything at this point. You can see how Spark are playing. They know this is the reality. Bebe does have the coalescence. This is going to be the only tool ready to take down Nero. I, and as long as he's dodging rocks, like you saw one fly past him previously, I wonder if they go for Barrage here without the EMP, because Happy's only at 50%. Neptuno goes down, you, you, you pick. Can't now. Um, yeah, Nero yeah. actually gets headshot out of the sky by Bazzi. It was already like 5 HP anyway, so it didn't really matter in the end. Or finishes off Shu. Good start for Spark, but EMP and Barrage are, well, coming online, at least the EMP is. This is the fight they were playing for. I mean, with 80 seconds left, you have to imagine an EMP gets up. And now you're just, you're like, just waiting for it. Happy at 70%. He could theoretically get there during this fight if he can find a good target. And then they'll have almost everything they want. The thing is, you want EMP before they have any good answers to it. Uh, Bazzi's got Blizzard. That kind of makes me excited now. Yeah, because Bazzi has to save it, though. He, he actually has to save it until Charge yeah. uh, end up touching the point. They do have, of course, the Orisa and the Sigma, so they're going to have to touch the point eventually. We oh, we're safe. getting close to Nano EMP Barrage, though. 10%, like you said. Two parts up. Two. I mean, they could, they could even just, like, up. Valkyrie if they ever feel like they're in trouble. They could open up a Flux. Like, they have everything. Okay, here it is. The EMP is going to come out soon. They're setting up for it. Nano onto the, oh, onto the far, into the Barrage, into the go into Gushway. Oh, the Ice Block may... Oh, Bazzi dies! There was no way he was going to escape from that one. They've been going to save the EMP almost. Nero happy, the kill feed just lighting up white. 33% is all that they needed. And with a blink of an eye, Charge are going to end the series just like that. Three and one. Netting yeah, the I win mean, over the spark. I, I know I've used this word a lot, but the, the composition just feels inevitable. And the way the Charge play it, they play it safe. They lose one. They, they're never throwing ultimates in in situations where they shouldn't. I think that's uh, one of the big differences between these teams is ultimate usage. There's a, too many times where the team in pink is throwing away ultimates when fights are already lost. So I think the, the Guangzhou Charge have their coordination now. And they're like, okay, three minutes, that's enough for everybody to get there. Like, in fact, if you don't get your ultimate in three minutes, you're off the team. We have players we can yeah. sub in because that's ridiculous. Um, so they, they end up getting their ultimates when they need to. And they use them just, I mean, look, we all saw it coming. It was like, is it going to be EMP, Barrage, and Nano? That's going to happen. And Hangzhou was never able to get defensive ultimates up in time. Well, they had one defensive ultimate. It was the May Blizzard, but <laughs> Nano Barrage right on top of the ice block. You're going to get insta kill. Yeah, yeah, and Nano happen. Barrage from Nero, and he's going to be our player of the match. Surprise, surprise, his Farah play has just looking so crispy, clean. Not too yep. much of a shock to see him there. I mean, it's not like these giant all-star plays, but that's not what they're asking for. I mean, you don't see the aggressive, uh, the, the aggressive boops forward to get him in position, a la like how Jinmu likes to play a little bit. But you see him playing passively, and he's giving his uh, his Mercy Neptuno outs to stay alive. He's playing a mile away, and with no Widow, no McCree, there's really nothing anyone can do about him. So it's just you're just looking at the Angel of Death charging up his his barrage, just waiting for it to happen, and that's essentially. Uh, the, the, the cliffs notes of how this how this series went. Well, Nero got a barrage. Of the week, yeah. really. Yeah. I yeah. mean, for the most part, far a good hero without hit scan DPS in rotation. <laughs> so like, never would have thought. Yeah, yeah, who would have thought it, huh? And Nero has just a fantastic far to begin with, anyway. So right. it wasn't too much of a shock that charge were going to go there. And like you said, very little to actually take him out. Who took him out in the end? A coalescence Moira. You're not going to get that up. <laughs> Every single fight, although not it does seem ideal. That way. Yeah, it's not ideal. I mean, you can do the halts and accretions, um, but he was playing so far away that he was almost never in danger. I don't think he got halted and rocked more than once that entire series. Yeah, at the end of the day, if you're using two abilities to even attempt to do that, you mm -hmm. are putting yourself in a situation where the enemy tanks can just play so aggressive because they know they're not going to get halted, they know accretion isn't coming, and. Right. That is exactly what happened. They put a lot of resources, well, Spark put a fair bit of resources in trying to deal with Nero. Meanwhile, Happy's just doing happy things. And then the double pocket onto the Farah. It looked all good for Charge, and they do end up taking the series, of course. We're going to jump to a quick break, though, guys. Do not go anywhere. We've got the Hunters facing up against the Dragons coming up soon.